Hi, my name is Dr. Rahul Panat and I'm from the Carnegie Mellon University. Today, I would like to talk about an exciting technology of a 10 second COVID-19 antibody test that has been developed in my lab at CMU. <clears throat> so COVID-19 pandemic, as we know, has devastated economies worldwide and has led to tragic loss of life. The, one of the key aspects of the solution to this situation is testing and more testing. So today in the United States, we carry out about 1 million tests per day. And some experts believe that we should be doing at least two times this testing, <clears throat> if not more. This gives the total available market for COVID-19 testing today at around $700 million per year. And this is assuming only a 10% market share, which is a very conservative estimate. The worldwide total available market is at least five times larger than this number. So there are several competing technologies for COVID-19 testing. So the RTQ-PCR test is highly accurate, but the results take about one to two days to come out. Um, current antibody tests take about 10 to 20 minutes per test. Uh, but they have high false negative rates. And of course, 10 to 20 minutes is much higher than what um, our technology offers. So our technology is based on 3D printed electrodes in, an elect uh, in a microfluidic channel and uh, where we can test presence of uh, antibodies in about 10 to 12 seconds. Our test requires only a few drops of blood, which can be obtained from a single finger prick. The sensing is at 0.1 picomolar concentration, which means earlier detection is possible. And what is most exciting is that we have enabled a smart phone-based platform that allows earlier, that allows or lowers the technical expertise required for this testing, which means that home testing is possible. And one device can be used up to 10 tests with a simple treatment of a minute between each of these tests. So currently the estimated manufacturing cost for the test is dollars two per test. Um, we have three provisional patents filed uh, which cover the concept, the architecture and the manufacturing method. And we are currently uh, discussing with UPMC about patient trials which would be used for FDA device approval process. So at this point, we are looking for investments um, in this area in this exciting technology where um, FDA, uh, uh, we are looking for FDA approval process, uh, getting support for that. And we would need about $4 million over next two years to, pu to put a team of marketing experts and engineers together, complete the FDA approval process, build a pilot line so that we can look, uh, discuss with partners to get to the scale up of the production of this exciting technology. Okay, thank you. Great presentation, thank you. I have some questions about where you stand with regard to product development specifically. Um, you said three to four years to develop it. Can you tell me, um, you know, how about confident you are that, two, sorry? About two years to develop two it. Years. Okay, yeah. still two years. How confident you are that uh, in, you know, the ability for it to work in 10 seconds and the ability for real people like the kind of people out in the field um, to be able to do what it takes to get this right and get those results. Are you getting those results with untrained people or do you need trained people? So at this time, graduate students are doing these results. So they are trained for sure. But um, I'm very confident that we will take about six months to get to FDA approval process through the FDA approval process. And the, the manufacturing process um, or the steps of the, to make this device are well known. So there is no new manufacturing step as such. It's the sequence of the steps that we use that is unique to this technology, uh, that is what is, is uh, protected. And we are very confident that um, a layman can just plug in this device into their smartphone. So there will be a dongle that on one side connects with the device, on the other side connects with the smartphone, and they would simply get a result of whether antibodies are present or not. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, um, we were going a little fast, so I don't know if you covered this in your slide, but what, who is the customer and how, who would be charged and how much? 
So uh, let me just go back to, I'm sorry if I went through this fast, uh, but the customers would be uh, people who want to carry out um, antibody tests. So this is the first screening test before we get to the RT-QPCR test. So um, this would be people, uh, let's say a, a factory, for example, is running. Uh, they want to get tested. Uh, from uh, every day, there are 1,000 people to be tested every day. Then what, what this would offer is a screening test that would enable uh, people in the factory to continue to work. And as soon as there are antibodies present on some, uh, some, some patient, then uh, that uh, person can be uh, quarantined and um, um, the other people working in the factory can safely continue manufacturing, for example, okay? And the estimated cost at this time is about $2 per test. And we are thinking about charging $25 per test, which is actually at a very low end of what people are charging for antibody tests. So does that answer your question? Hi, Rahul, this is Afshan, very interesting presentation. Um, Quick question, you talked about $2 as a cost to produce, you've estimated that. Yes. Um, where do you feel, um, what's your level of confidence with achieving that and what's, where's your supply chain? Is it a mix of domestic and international or is it all overseas? So um, at this point, much of the uh, things like a glass slide on which we will be uh, depositing a, a, a thin layer of gold and then um, uh, using a polydimethyl siloxane, um, which, is, which is a mold, which is obtained from 3M um, in, over in Minnesota. So all the elements of the supply chain are in the United States. And in fact, the 3D printing technology that we are um, using at this point to increase the sensitivity of the device um, is, is a company headquartered in New Mexico. So um, these 3D printers are uh, domestic and uh, the supply chain can remain in the United States, but that doesn't prevent us from going abroad. So the $2 per, per test that I'm estimating is based upon um, all everything resourced from the United States. Yeah. But this is the manufacturing cost though, right? So there will be some marketing costs associated and, and others that would add up, but $25 per device uh, per test is going to be super profitable is, is what I'm confident about, yeah. Uh, Dr. Panat, Pat Moran here. Um, just a quick question. Do you plan on licensing this or commercializing it? So, so, so Patrick, we, um, I thought about this very uh, uh, thoroughly considering the importance of this work. And I think the plan at this point is to, to get to a, a point where we can uh, come up with a, a set manufacturing process that can be um, done at a minimum cost. I come from industry. I spent about a decade at Intel Corporation. So I know how the manufacturing, how critical setting up a, 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 at least a, a final manufacturing process is, is how important it is and then transferring that to a partner who can scale it up. So I do not think that I will scale up to millions of parts per year, but um, setting up a pilot line and getting production ready here will add extremely high value to, to this discovery and we can take it from there. 